Hello everybody, I'm back with another video. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram and TikTok, then please do. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a review. And the TV show I'm going to be talking about is called Queen Charlotte. So this is season one. And this is Queen Charlotte, a bridge in the story. So I'm going to be saying my thoughts on each characters. And then I'll say my final thoughts. And then anything comes when I get to the show, I'll say that at the end. So... This video will include spoilers in it, so if you don't want to be spoiled, then please get to please get this video. Then once you've seen the show, you can come back. But if you don't care about spoilers, then keep on watching. So before I start doing the video, I want to mention a couple things. I am not feeling one hundred percent. I haven't been feeling one hundred percent for the last two days, but I'm feeling a bit better now. But I'm not doing anything right now, so I said, "Why not?" And it's very sunny. Um, so I thought why not and it shouldn't be a long video anyway so if I sound myself that's why and I am very tired but I want to persevere for you guys and also I have notes on this phone so if you see me looking down that is why. This character I'll be talking about Charlotte so this is the younger Charlotte so I really like the development you see through her throughout the show you can see that she's put in, she's been put in a situation that she doesn't want to be in. She has to send Mari someone she doesn't know, and when she tries to talk to people about him, they wouldn't give her the, they wouldn't give her the answer that she wanted. The only answer she got was that he's the king, and that's basically it. Having to have someone who she doesn't, having to marry someone she doesn't know, and basically having someone behind her that she doesn't know, and she didn't give him a heads up or nothing like that. So she, it wasn't like she was told, oh, you're going to have this person that's going to be behind you and his name is Brimsley. Like, she wasn't told any of that. So trust me, I would want to climb over that wall as well if I was Charlotte. She wanted to go home so many times, but with with help of people like Lady Delvery, she understood how much this would do for her people if the great experiment works. Let's be honest, if it wasn't for Queen Charlotte, people like Kate and Anthony being together wouldn't be possible this is because way back in the past their kind of love was seen as forbidden love and something it's still seen as now so people being like into relation dating was forbidden it wasn't something that was seen as a good thing and it still isn't now um then having to find out about george in that kind of way i feel bad for her and seeing And seeing her and seeing him like that didn't make her love him any less and that's one of the reasons why I love them together. When she finds about George you can see her being more comfortable in her role and she lets her guard down and she's being vulnerable around him and it's really good to watch. Also the way that Charlotte was saying about Lady Danbury breaking her brother's heart at her ball and saying that she would have she should have come to her when she had the issues about the time or the money, all of it. Which Lady Danbury says that she didn't want to put her burden onto her, but Charlotte says they're basically one crown, so they have to look after. They have, they have to look out for each other. Now that we have talked about younger Charlotte, I'm going to talk about present day Charlotte. So that's Queen Charlotte. This is the Charlotte that we know from Bridgerton season one and season two. I'm going to be honest, I have mixed feelings about her because the younger Charlotte loves George, wants to be around him so much, and the older one just basically wants to keep the bloodline going, which I do understand because when she was younger, that's all people kept on talking about. When, like they kept on saying, oh, when will we be expecting a child or when will we be expecting an heir? I do really like seeing her with kids, and yes, it gave those iconic moments like sorrows, sorrows, prayers. But the scene when her children was basically saying that she hadn't been a good mother but i'm sure they did understand that she's busy and stuff like that which i'm sure they did mention that i feel like she did she does love george a lot but she has been given these roles and responsibilities and it's learning how to balance it more effectively effect effectively uh, also um i haven't really watched the show in a while so a lot of these thoughts I'm saying is off by memory, so if I forget anything, then I apologise. It is really sad how, apart from the scene when she's under the bed with George, which was a really good scene, by the way, the only thing we see present day even mention him is when she's asked if he's dead. Overall, as a character, I really like Queen Charlotte, but I find her more relatable when talking about the younger version of Queen Charlotte. Of so the next character I'll be talking about is George. Where can I start with George? What a character, something that I love about 
him is that I was so invested in his character. What I've got to show is that I'm so invested in the characters. If Ben is doing something I'm interested, if Lady Danby is doing something I'm interested, if George is talking about how he loves farming, and me, a person who's never farmed in her life, and to be honest, I probably never will, but if George is talking about it, then I'll sit down and listen. I would really listen, I would willingly listen to what he's saying. And George was so well written, having so much pressure on him and having to deal with his illness or situation. And at that time, they didn't have medication or they couldn't diagnose people or didn't know how to, like they do today. We have that scene with George and Charlotte in the garden, which was very sweet. Then given us that scene when George was saying that he has to, they have to live apart. And that moment was kind of when I was like kind of disliking George. I was like, what? That kind of shocked me and it shocked a lot of people as well. You know that song that goes red? The song that goes, I see red. That's basically how I saw because I was just very angry. I was like, what? So after all this, now you want to be separate, but when it was his episode, I understood more why he wanted to be separate. I was standing up for my girl Charlotte, so when he said, I'm sorry, so when she said, I'm sorry, I thought you were just George, I was like, yes, tell him. However, I do really appreciate episodes four and see more of his side. The love that George is getting is well deserved because I know I said Anthony sets the bar high, but with George, the bar doesn't exist because my goodness. I know what it's like to feel like a burden and probably what he felt a lot of the times, especially when he's not being a bad burn. I'm getting emotional writing this, so I'm going to go to the next character. The next character I'll be talking about is Agatha, aka Lady Danbury. I love Lady Danbury with all my heart. She was my favourite and her friendship with Charlotte is so good. You see that she goes through so much, but she still stays true to herself. The scenes between her and her husband were very hard to watch, but I liked how they showed how certainly things are always cupcakes and rainbows she was given something that she clearly didn't want to be in that situation but she learned to handle it the best of her ability seeing her husband die in that kind of way even though i saw it coming was very surprising and she, knowing that she had to still she had to grieve him even though she didn't she might have not loved him but she did kind of care about him it's very confusing to be honest so i can understand where she was coming from then you see her being with violet's dad and then liking or even loving Charlotte's brother. She does go through a lot and it's just very hard for me not to root for her. See her finally get a form of feeling happy after so long, but then every time something good happens to her, something bad happens, so basically she gets something good, but then she finds out that basically her husband left her no money. I was very sad about that and how she and Charlotte's brother, I think her name is Adopment, uh, Abdulis, I don't know how to pronounce it, but seeing that they didn't end up together because I think they would have been very good together. But I totally understand when she said about she spent her whole life breathing somebody else's air and how she needs to breathe on her own. Like that totally made sense to me. I was so sad watching that scene because it's clear how she, how much he likes her, and I'm pretty sure she, she likes him as well. But I do understand and completely respect her choice that she made. The next character I'll be talking about is Violet Bridgerton. So Violet Bridgerton is the mother of the Bridgerton children and you see more of her when she was younger. So we see a lot of backstories and or flashbacks about her. One of my favourite scenes is when she goes to the ball and she was talking to her parents about the Queen and then she sees Lady Debris and she's very excited and her mum's like, oh, we should have brought her out. Like saying that she they brought her out too early and then dad's like, oh, let her have some fun or something like that. And because I found it interesting because they're friends now but they probably didn't get the best introduction. Seeing her Queen Charlotte and Lady Danbury having tea and she's talking about two of her children being married so Violet's talking about two of her children being married which we know is Daphne and Anthony and the Queen's basically saying oh how did you get them to marry and she said oh it helps if they're in love and with the whole Lady Danbury and her dad situation I feel like she does know because there's many long pauses and there's times when Violet gives Lady Danbury the cold shoulder. This isn't just in this, this season, but in season two as well. I hope it is addressed in season three. However, I'm more worried about what could happen because I don't want them to stop being friends because apart from Lady Danbury and Queen Charlotte together, they're my favourite friendship. Also, Eloise and Penelope, but that's on the walk here right now. Violet is very smart and you can see that, especially in the flashback scenes. I wouldn't be surprised if she has already figured out 
about the dad, but probably hasn't said anything because she wants it to come. She wants it to come from Lady Danbury. Seeing the present day Violet being very lonely because she misses her husband Edwin and her saying that her garden is in bloom is very sad because she has to she has been there for so many other people and helping them with their struggles or situations and the person who was mostly there for her was Edmund and he's not no longer here and yes her children are there for her but they have their own stuff going on so it's just very sad to see the next character I'll be talking about is Abdul I really do not know how to pronounce his name but I will be talking about Charlotte's brother so I'm going to start by saying that I probably have said this in my season 2 review but I'm going to say it again because if you but if you have a problem with what I'm about to say then you can skip this part but I just I want to know where they get these men from because I I love how women don't get me wrong I love how women I stand for my men but these men and that's why I said fictional men they're up there real men are like way down 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 but fictional men are up there because you got the duke you got Benedict, you got Anthony, and now you got George, Farmer George. Like, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a madman. I did it. Um, I tell you where you are. Do you? I love you. From the, and then when the part when they're in the garden and she's basically trying to climb up the when she's talking about a monster and, and then it turns out that it's him which I was not surprised that it was him so she's like oh and then the, the brother comes and she's like oh yeah no she hasn't decided yet I'm like <sighs> and even later on there's a scene when she's he asks for oh where's, where's Charlotte and she's like I'm here and she basically says she was with the baby it's just they're just daffing and you cannot compete. Yes, I know we got them. I know if it wasn't for Daphne and the Duke, we wouldn't be where we are now. Yes, I know. I'm pretty sure I did say that in my Bridgerton 2 review. I understand that, so I appreciate them for that. But my gosh, then you just can't compare when you can't compete because it's not fair. It's like when people say, let's like, compare apples and oranges. It's just because you've got Anthony. And Kate, love them, their chemistry, wow. And now you've got George and, like, even, there's this TikTok, like, right, where you can, like, choose which person you like. And my friend, my friend did it, and I did it. And when Anthony comes up and it's Anthony against George, whereas people just pick George, like, their heads just, like, bumping like this. George and George, which I, I can't, like, Anthony, we love Anthony. Like, I love Anthony a lot. But let's be honest, George is way better. Like I love George, and as I said, he deserves the love that he's getting because my love him. I mean, I'm a Benedict girl through and through, but Benedict and George are—they were my favorite, and I love the brother as well. Like he's very funny. As I said, he needs to be in it more. If I didn't say that already, he needs to be in it more. But I was on the edge of my seat. Sadly, he isn't in it that much, but when he is in it, I was very happy. As much as I like his character and him and Charlotte's sibling bond was funny and but what to be honest what would they have done with him more if he was in it um because I know he was just most he mostly come back when he because of his nephew but once his nephew came was born he left so that did make sense if I really talked about this but this but him and Lady Danbury would have been so good together and seeing him sad like that was really hard to watch plus seeing, the, seeing Charlotte talking to, Anf, talking to Agatha about him and how he was heartbroken and talking about how he's a kind, a kind soul it was just so emotional but again I do understand why she chose not to marry him I would have loved to see him more but for what we got I was very happy and I would have preferred to see him way more than a doctor Speaking of the Doctor, the next person I will be talking about is the Doctor. What an annoying person. Every time he was on screen, I literally wanted to punch my phone or my tablet or whatever I was using. It was probably my phone, but I just wanted to punch it because he was just annoying. The way of finding his cure was basically torture. And I was so happy when Charlotte walked in and basically put a stop to it. I'm not sure about this, but 
I feel like he lied when he said about the child being pregnant because he basically after George said to him that he doesn't need him anymore he said oh he was saying about her being pregnant so I feel like he was lying just to manipulate him like he could have been telling the truth I don't know but I feel like he was lying because it's that that set him off again and that's the reason why he said oh put me back in the chair <clears throat> When George was saying about how we've been at this for days and start at the same place and even Reynolds told him about how he doesn't believe the doctor's methods and George did too but he loved Charlotte so much that he wanted to go through it because he wanted to be with her. I'm glad that the doctor doesn't come back after what Charlotte basically told him and because he was like oh you're not allowed to come back or do this ever again so I'm glad he didn't come back after that. So yeah screw him. The next character I talk about is Brimsley. I love Brimsley, he's very funny and I love his relationship with Reynolds and it's so sad that they can only be together when basically George and Charlotte was having sex or as they say even days. I know it's most likely doomed, I knew it was most likely doomed from the start because let's be honest queer relationships don't usually get a happy ending especially back then so I kind of knew that it was going to be doomed from the start but I but seeing how much he loved Reynolds and was even wasn't able to hold his hand in public. It was very sad and how let's talk let's talk about that dark scene because at the end I did cry. A lot of the people wanna know a lot of people wanna know what happened to Reynolds and there's a chance that he died or moved away. But I loved the chemistry that they had and how much they cared about each other and wanted to do what was right for the king and the queen as well because I do remember that there's a scene when Reynolds is mad at Brimsley and this is around the time when he says that the king isn't ill. I love how we see that in the present day Brimsley is still there for Queen Charlotte and the scene when he's like oh he would marry me it just brought me to tears. The next character I'll be talking about is Reynolds. I really like Reynolds the scene when he puts his hand on George's shoulder and comforts him was very sweet there's not much to say about him sadly but I would like to know what basically happened to him but I'm not going to say anything more about him because it's basically the same thing that I just said so I'm not going to repeat myself. Um, the next character I'll be talking about is George's mom, and her name is Augusta. I think it's Augusta. I don't know, but she's the princess of Wales, etc. Um, I did not like her the way she was talking about Charlotte, saying, "Oh, she's very brown." Like that annoyed me. And it's not even the fact that she said it one time; she said it like three times. And the way she kept on saying it just annoyed me. And I'm pretty sure that this wasn't the first time that we see race racism in the show. I didn't like her and the way she was putting pressure on George. I understand why, but I still don't like it. Yes, I understand that they want an heir, but I just didn't like her. So what I did, so what I did really like is that she seen um her and Lady Danbury, when Lady Danbury's basically crying and they're having a heart to heart, and she's saying that she doesn't like her, but she just like, like she, but she likes their back and forth. Um, she basically tells her that she needs to control her own fate, and also when. When she was holding George, and that was sweet, and we basically learned more about her backstory, and basically about how after the husband died, she had to be around the husband's dad, and he basically put bruises on her and George. Even though I don't like her, I do find her character interesting, and I'm glad that she and Lady Danbury were able to come to kind of a middle ground. So that's all the characters I've talked about. My final thought is that I really enjoyed the show. I was confused at some parts, but then it started to make more sense. And I liked how they showed the younger version and the older versions of the characters. I really like the outfit and the styles that were used, especially the hair for Charlotte and Agatha. I do have some questions, so I really hope they grow season two. But I really enjoyed the show and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I don't think they're going to do a season two on Queen Charlotte because um, I don't think they. I just don't think they will. Um, but as a show, I did really enjoy it. Um, I think the writing is way better in this season than in the last season. I think the pacing's better. It's just uh, way better in season two. Um, it's, do I enjoy it more than season two? Probably. I did enjoy it more than season two, but I rewatched season two way more than I watched season, than I watched Queen Charlotte. But 
so with my everything is probably in the video no, I think. so with my favorite video of the year when i plan to do it um queen shot is definitely gonna be done by this queen shot is definitely one of my favorite oh, my favorite tv shows that i've seen this year it's really good and it's just up there it's, it's definitely one of the best because i came i remember i came into the bridgerton world watching queen shot at first because i watched queen shot and bridgerton season one and then season two so i did it backwards um but yeah i really enjoyed the show it's really good i recommend it i recommended it to my friend and she really enjoyed it so yeah, I just really think it's a really good show, I think it's really good, and the show is very iconic, which I'm not surprised about, because it's, I really, I remember, especially when it came out, my TikTok was just sorrows, sorrows, prayers, or I'll tell you where you are, do you love me, I love you, that was all over my TikTok, but yeah, that's it, that's, but that's all the thoughts I have to say about this video, um, if they do Funko Pops, I will probably get it. That's for Bridgerton as well, but I don't know if they will ever do Funko Pops. But yeah, I don't really have that much to say. I think I said all of the characters. Um, there are other characters as well, but these are the main ones in the show. Um, um, there's also the dad, but I mean, he was alright. Um, I don't really have much to say about him. He, I didn't like him and Violet together, like, I like the, they were funny, and, but apart from that, that is the end of the video, if you guys like it, please give it a thumbs up, also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our post, I have loads of other videos planned, I have about three, two more videos, two more, about three reviews planned that I want to do, so please, I for that, but, I don't know when I'm going to next film, but, Still keeping an eye for now. I have, I have the my Never Have I Ever season four review that I want to do. I have Heartstopper season two. Um, I really want to do vinyl collection soon because I haven't done one in a while. I want to do another Everybody Is Bothering Me. I have that planned. So I have a lot of videos planned. It's just when I have time to one write the, them and also film them. And also I want to do album reviews because I realized the last album I did was. I think it was Midnight Taylor Swift, so I want to do another album review. Um, but yeah, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe button so you don't miss out on our post. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.